Eastern hemlocks are native evergreen trees that create unique habitats. These trees are being attacked by two invasive insect pests. To fully understand how these insects affect hemlocks and how environmental factors affect the insects, we must understand their life cycles. In this video, I will compare the complex life cycles of these two invasive insect pests. The first insect pest we're going to talk about is the elongate hemlock scale, EHS for short, Fiorinia externa. Here is shown the female, which is wingless and legless, encased in a cover, about two millimeters long. Here's another female shown here. Here is a male in its cocoon, a little bit smaller than the female, and even smaller are these little nymphs, which are another stage in the life cycle. The main host for the elongate hemlock scale in the northeastern United States is the hemlock. But this species of insect can also live on 42 other conifer hosts. This species reproduces sexually. I show both sexes in purple, males in blue, and females in red. This species completes one generation in a year here in the Northeast. If the weather is mild enough, the species can fit in a partial second generation. However, those nymphs from that partial second generation generally die in the winter. The species does complete two full generations in their native Japan, as well as in some areas of the southeastern United States. The eggs are found from September to May and generally hatch out at the beginning of June. What hatches out from the eggs is the first instar nymph, or also known as the crawler stage. The crawler has legs and can walk around and run around, and they can crawl to find an appropriate place to settle on their own, or they can be dispersed by wind or animals such as deer or birds. When they settle on the underside of young needles on the lower part of the hemlock crown, they feed by sticking a long, stylet into the needle and feed on the mesophyll tissue. Once they are settled, they secrete a cover and they never move again. Both males and females go through the crawler in first instar nymph stage, then they go through a second instar nymph stage. The males then go through two more stages, the prepupa and pupa stage, Adult males emerge out of a cocoon made by the pupa. Adult males have wings, but are not good flyers. Males do not feed as a prepupa, a pupa, or an adult. They do feed as a first instar or second instar nymph. Once an adult male mates, it dies. Adult females develop directly from the second instar nymph. They do not go through a prepupa or pupa stage. Unlike the males, the females do feed. They lay their eggs inside their cover. The most common overwintering stages are eggs or adult females that are inseminated. Adult females that are inseminated lay their eggs at the end of the winter and the eggs then hatch at the end of May, early June, and the cycle continues. The other species of invasive pest on hemlocks is the hemlock woolly adelgid, or HWA for short. The species name is Adelgis zugae. Adults, shown here, range in size from about 0.8 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters long. The nymphs, over here, 0.3 millimeters to 0.5 millimeters long. The eggs are covered in a woolly looking white waxy coating called an egg mass, which is usually on the order of about three millimeters in diameter. The only host for HWA in the northeastern United States is hemlock. They reproduce asexually only and are all females. This is called parthenogenetic. HWA goes through two full generations within the course of a year. Each generation has its own name. One name is cistens, which in Latin means to halt. This, stage, this generation has a dormant stage, that's why to halt is appropriate. 
The other generation is progredians, which in Latin means to proceed, and this generation does not have a dormant stage. The eggs for the progredians generation are laid in the late winter, early spring in a woolly mass. What hatches out of the eggs are crawlers, or first instar nymphs. Just like the elongate hemlock scale, these are the dispersal stage. They crawl on their own or are dispersed by wind or animals like birds or deer or humans. In HWA's case, the crawlers settle at the base of the youngest branches they can find. They stick their stylet into the stem at the base of the needles and feed on the xylem ray parenchyma cells. These cells store and transport energy and nutrients for the tree. Once the crawlers are settled, they never move again. After the crawler stage, the progredians generation goes through three more nymph stages, the second, third, and fourth instar nymphs. Then by June, they develop into adult females. The adult progredians females lay the eggs for the cistins generation in the summertime, June and July, they also lay them in a white woolly egg mass. Out from the cistins eggs hatches cistins crawlers, or first instar nymphs. These nymphs settle at the base of the needles on the youngest branches they can find. The cistins crawlers, once settled, go into a dormant state. Dormant states in Insects are called diapause. When diapause is in the summer, it's called estivation. When it's in the winter, it's called hibernation. Since this dormant state, this diapause, is in the summer, it's called estivation. So these estivating first star nymphs are in this dormant diapause state throughout the summer and early fall. Many of these nymphs do not survive the summer. Once the First instar nymphs wake up in about mid-October. They begin feeding and continue developing. The cistins generation then goes through three more nymph stages, the second, third, and fourth instar nymphs. The mechanism for how the cistins generation survives, feeds, grows, and develops over winter is not known. The adult female assistance females start maturing by February and, and then begin laying their eggs in mid-February and starts the progredians generation over again and the cycle continues. Some of the progredians eggs do actually develop into a winged adult. These adult females that have wings fly off to find a spruce host. In their native Japan, the suitable spruce host is called tiger tail spruce. In Japan, on this spruce host, which is actually their primary host and hemlock is their secondary host, the hemlock woolly adelgid goes through three more quick generations, one of which those generations is actually sexually reproducing. So they have male, separate sexes, males and females. However, here in the Northeastern United States, when these winged adults go off to find the spruce, there are no suitable spruces here in the United States, so none of them survive. So they never go through that sexual reproduction. Only these two generations of asexual reproduction here in the United States.